Sean and Catherine Rzusek was born on January 10, 1984, in Clifton, New Jersey. She lived with her family in Aberdeen, also North Carolina. Her parents were Frank and Sandra Rzusek. Sean Ann also had a younger brother named Frankie Jr. There is not much information about her childhood, but it is known that she was married in her youth with Leonard King for a short period of time, where she lived a very troubled relationship. Sean Ann is described by those close to her as a very charismatic and independent woman. At 25, she had already bought her own house. Sean Ann was at one of the best times in her life. After some time she started getting sick very often and after some tests she found out she had lupus, an autoimmune disease that has treatment but no cure. Sean Ann and her entire family were very shaken by this diagnosis, but they still gave her all the support she needed to face this new challenge. Around the same time Sean Ann received a Facebook friend request from a man named Christopher Lee Watts. Christopher was born on May 16, 1985 in Fayetteville, North Carolina. The son of Cindy and Ronnie Watts, there is not much information on the internet about his life, but it is known that he graduated from Pine Forest High School and lived with his family in North Carolina. Sean Ann after a little reluctance, accepted the friendship request, they started talking and became friends. According to Sean Ann herself, she did everything for him to lose interest in her. However, Christopher was even more interested, even going to her doctor's appointments with her. It made Sean Ann fall in love with him. The couple began a relationship and were married in the county of Mecklenburg on November 3, 2012. Shannon's entire family attended the wedding, but none of Christopher's family attended their wedding. They didn't like Shannon and the relationship between Shannon and Christopher's family worsened when in 2013 when the couple bought a five-bedroom home in a gated community that cost approximately $400,000 in Frederick, Colorado, 1,600 miles away of Aberdeen. Christopher's family didn't like it, they didn't want him to move from North Carolina. In Colorado they had two daughters, Bella Marie born on December 17, 2013 and Celeste Catherine born on July 17, 2015. In 2015 the couple went through financial problems, they accumulated a debt of approximately $448,000 and had to declare bankruptcy. Later Christopher was hired by Anadarko Petroleum while Sean N worked from home for the Thrive Company, Sale of Patches. These patches contain natural substances that are absorbed by the skin and promise to help with many things, such as weight loss and insomnia. In addition, she also took care of the house and daughters. Shannon was very active on social media, always looking for new clients, but she also showed a lot of her daily routine with her daughters. Soon Shannon received a promotion at the company and started working in the marketing area. The Watts family was seen as a perfect family. By the time Christopher stopped showing interest in Sean Ann, she became sad and even told some close friends about it. She wasn't eating or sleeping well, but Sean Ann was willing to save their relationship as she was in love with Christopher. In 2018, Sean Ann became pregnant again with a boy who would be named Nico. With this pregnancy Sean Ann thought that her husband's attitude would change and everything would return to the way it used to be as he was always very attached to his daughters but it didn't work and Christopher was getting farther away each day. She started to think the problem was with her and questioned him about it, but he always said it was nothing. In June 2018, Shannon traveled with her daughters to North Carolina to spend a month with her family. During all time Christopher showed no affection for Shannon, he did not call or text her. There Shannon spent most of her time at her parents' house, but she took time to visit her in-laws, but there was a fight between her and her mother-in-law, which ended up eroding even more the relationship between the two. Chris had gone to meet her a few days earlier as they had arranged because he couldn't make it earlier due to his job. Shannon later commented to a friend that during this trip he remained cool and distant. They returned home and Shannon began to suspect that her husband was cheating on her. Shannon noticed that while she was at your parents' house, Christopher had spent a huge amount of cash on a card they shared at a restaurant, and the distrust proved to be true. Christopher was having an extramarital relationship. On August 13, 2018 Shannon had to take a business trip to Arizona along with other co-workers while Christopher took care of his daughters. Her friend named Nicola Toft Atkinson dropped her off at her front door around 1.48 in the morning. Before entering Shannon reported to her friend that she was not feeling well and said that the next day she would go to the doctor as she was pregnant and was afraid that there was something wrong with the baby. Shannon arranged with her friend to go to the doctor together, so they said goodbye and Shannon entered the house as we can see in the security camera footage. 
also on August 13, around noon Nicole, drove over to pick her up as arranged, but when she called for her, no one answered. She noticed that the car was in the garage, texted her, tried to call several times, but was not answered. Nicole also looked into the house through the window panes, but he didn't see any movement either. Very worried, her friends started to think that Sean Ann could have been sick inside and could be in need of help, so not really knowing what to do, she decided to call the police. When the police arrived they also knocked on the door, called Shanann's cell phone and looked around the house, but found nothing suspicious. They also talked to neighbors who also said they hadn't seen anything. Shanann's friend explained to the police that she was pregnant, but they said they couldn't break into the house without the owner's permission, so they were able to reach Christopher on the phone. That's when things start to get weird. Christopher said he left the house around 6 a.m. to work and left Shanann sleeping with her daughters. He also said that she did not mention to him that she was feeling sick and and she said she would take the children to play at a friend's house. The lock on the couple's home door was electronic and needed a password to unlock it, but when they asked Christopher for the password, he wouldn't go through and said the lock was broken and could only be opened with a key. Officers said her car was still in the garage with child seats inside and asked permission to break down the door, but Christopher wouldn't let them. Instead, he decided to leave work and go there. Christopher didn't seem to have understood the seriousness of having his pregnant wife passed out and locked in the house alone. Arriving at his house, he was somewhat reluctant to let the police search the house, he entered the garage alone and then opened the door from the inside. There, everyone started looking for Shanann and the children. They looked in every room but there was no sign of them. Shanann's shoes were still behind the front door and her belongings such as purse, wallet, keys, and cell phone were on the kitchen table which was very strange, as Shanann didn't leave the house without her things. Strangest of all, after a few minutes Chris appeared surprised showing the police what he had found in the room. Shanann's wedding ring, according to Chris, the wedding ring was lying on the bed. The cop asked him if they had any fights the night before that justified her going out with the kids and leaving her things behind. He said they were going through a divorce, but there was no fight. Christopher initially told police he had no idea where Shanann and the girls might be and had not seen his wife since that morning. All the while he remained calm about the situation, which caught everyone's attention considering that his daughters and his pregnant wife were missing. Even though he wasn't caring about his wife, the police had expected him to at least show concern for the kids, but he didn't. One of the neighbors told authorities that he had a security camera that could film a small portion of the entrance to the Watts family home. The police asked to see these images and unlike what Christopher had reported to the police, it was possible to see that him, around 5 o'clock in the morning, parked his car very close to the front door of the house and then it is possible to see him putting it on some stuff in the back of the truck. When Christopher saw the footage, the calm he had shown until that moment, disappeared. He showed in front of everyone a great nervousness, put his hand on his head, he looked desperate, it was clear that he was very worried after seeing those recordings. The next day, August 14, Shanann's disappearance made news throughout the region. He gave a few interviews asking for any information that would lead to the whereabouts of his wife and daughters and appealed for her to return home saying the house was not the same without them, but investigations began and Christopher was arrested for interrogation. Investigators asked Christopher to take the polygraph test, but he failed the test. In this test the authorities asked Christopher if he had any mistresses, and he replied that he did not. He was also asked if he knew the whereabouts of his wife and daughters, he also replied that he didn't but the police told Christopher that they already knew he had a mistress named Nicole Kessinger who worked with him. Christopher was surprised to find that they already knew about this detail of his life. According to the police, it was Nicole herself who sought them out to tell them that she had already been in a relationship with Christopher for some time. Nicole said he didn't know Shanann was pregnant and that he found out after he watched the news. She also said that during Shanann's trip to North Carolina, she and Christopher spent all of their time together. They traveled, went to restaurants, and he even took her inside his house. That explained why during the trip Christopher hadn't made a point of calling Shanann. Nichols' cell phone was seized for further investigation and police noticed that after Shanann disappeared, Christopher sent her some messages talking about the future they would have together. It was also possible to see that Nichols had searched his cell phone for wedding dresses and also for Scott Peterson's lover, a woman named Amber Fry. 
This was another criminal case that took place in 2002. Scott took the life of his wife Lacey, who was also pregnant, to be with her lover. But Amber saw the news and decided to contact the police to tell them about the extramarital relationship she was having with Scott. Nicole also researched how much money Amber made from the book she wrote telling her story after the crime. This whole weird attitude by Christopher and Nicole was being considered very suspicious by the police. After police pressured Christopher, he asked them to call his father. In the interrogation room on August 15, Christopher confessed to his them that he had killed Shannon. According to him, they had a fight because Shannon would not accept a divorce. Also according to his testimony, he said that Shannon tried to provoke him by taking the lives of his two daughters, at that time in anger and on impulse he killed his wife. On August 16, 2018, Christopher finally told the police where their bodies were. He said he did not know what to do after killing her so in a repulsive act he buried his wife in a piece of land and placed the bodies of his daughters in oil tanks. The investigators went to the place indicated by Christopher to find out. The site was one of the company's oil rigs where Christopher worked. They searched the entire area and found Sean and buried in nearby land and later found the children inside the tanks as Christopher had said. The bodies were sent for necropsy, and after examinations it was found that Shannon was strangulated and the girls killed by suffocation. Christopher's version didn't make any sense to the police, since if Shannon had really taken the girls' lives there would have been no reason for him to hide the bodies. The necropsy report also confirmed that Shannon was killed before her daughters, and not after as Christopher had said. The whole truth came out. Christopher was charged with first-degree murder, afraid of being sentenced to the death penalty, decided to confess to the entire crime. According to his confession, Christopher is said to have killed Sean Ann after an argument over divorce. During the murder, Bella, the eldest daughter of the couple, woke up and saw what her father had done to her mother. Christopher then told the girl that Sean Ann was sick. He loaded the body of Sean Ann in the back of the truck and he took the girls with him, without their child seats, in the back seat. Later, he smothered the youngest daughter first while the oldest asked if he was going to do that to her too. After all, he buried his wife and dumped the children's bodies in the tanks. On November 19, 2018, Christopher Watts was sentenced to five life sentences without the possibility of parole, plus 48 years in prison for being a trusted person of the victims. At the trial Christopher said that if he hadn't met Nickel, none of this would have happened. Even at the trial, Shannon's parents told him how much they loved him and how much his wife and daughters loved him. Christopher Watts' parents told him that they forgave him and that they would continue to love him no matter what. Nickel became one of the most hated women in America and had to enter a witness protection program, move to another city, and had her name changed. Perhaps, she thought she would write a book and gain public sympathy like Scott Peterson's mistress did at the time, but with her things turned out quite differently. In 2020 Netflix made a documentary about this story, after the documentary Christopher received many letters in prison from women saying he was handsome and that they would like to meet him. Christopher Watts is currently serving his sentence at the Dodge Correctional Institution, a maximum security prison in Wappen, Wisconsin, and has come to be known worldwide as the Monster of Denver. Chris Watts had it all, a stable life, a home in a gated community, and a family who loved him but chose to trade everything for a mistress and committed one of the worst crimes you can imagine.